More US golf coming up for you this week. One of the highlights of the tour is the Players' Championship. Over a million dollars up for grabs for the winner. David Duval will be defending his title against the likes of Tiger Woods, Colin Montgomery, Darren Clark and Lee Westwood. Our coverage begins on Thursday afternoon from 4.30. It is live only on Sky Sports 2. 1-0 to Barnsley at half-time at a, well, not the most distinguished of first 45 minutes. Ray and Nigel are with me. At this stage of the season, the result is all that really matters, isn't it? Well, you like to play well and win, but if you can't play well, just getting the three points at this stage is the most important thing for the running. You know, if you get three points, you're one step closer to getting promoted, aren't you? Are Fulham inviting trouble on themselves by playing just the one man up front and uh, inviting Barnsley to go forward a little too often? I thought they did it very well in the first half, Marcus. I've got to say, they, they, were, they were throttling the life out of Barnsley. They didn't know where to go, Barnsley, because they were so well organised in the field. And they had a couple of very good chances of themselves, Fulham. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate they just fell asleep on the corner kick. Now that they have gone behind, do you envisage a change by Paul Bracewell in the second half, or can they keep going as they have? Been up to now. I would have thought knowing Paul, he would probably leave it as it is for a, for a 15 minutes or so, see if they can snatch one back, but then obviously make the change after. Well, they were very unhappy about the goal. We're not sure exactly whether it's because they thought it wasn't a corner which led to it. This was the incident beforehand, and it clearly, Nigel, is Terry Fielding who gets the touch, and therefore it is a corner. It is a corner, definitely. I think they might be appealing that Neil Shipley's coming behind him trying to push him there, but I don't think it is. I think it's a corner. And then he just switch off. Barnard's corner in, Hignett reacts first, and then Neil Shippey does very, very well to get in there behind Chris Coleman and put that in the back of the net. Reacted very quickly. Anything illegal about uh, Shippey's challenge on Coleman? Then? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I thought it was a, it was a clever goal because Hignett's bright, and he was very bright on that corner kick. Okay. Well, earlier uh, we thought there might have been a penalty <coughs> for Barnsley, who, as Ray said, were, were struggling to make a mark, but Darren Barnard went on one of those little runs, and both Ball and Melville. Are close to him there. What do you reckon, Nigel? No penalty. No, I think it's a great tackle. Well timed tackle from Andy Melville there. It's a good move actually from Bar Barnard. Good one two and gets in there, but it's a fantastic ta tackle. Okay, well, plenty of other games taking place tonight uh, and a real cracker at Edgley Park, the game between Sport and Manchester City, which is a derby game, of course. Now, Manchester City made the perfect start. Remember, no wins in six for Joe Royal's side, but they were in front after seven minutes. Jamie Pollock with the final touch just what they needed. Remember, Stockport haven't won in the league since the turn of the year. They've slumped from a top seven position to 16th. But they've come right back into it after 28 minutes. Ian Moore equalised. And that was a couple of minutes after Nicky Weaver had been forced to make a really good save as well. Stockport piling on the pressure. This is a, a calm finish, isn't it? Very calm. But he gets away there. Man City playing a very, very high line, playing offside there. A bit suicidal, actually. Mm -hmm. He's Nicky Weaver exposed and stops it away very well more. And then a couple of minutes before half time, Stockport went in front. Mike Flynn from the corner. It goes without saying, Ray of City lose this. It's something of a disaster for them. It would be a disaster for them. But you see, the ball just hits Flynny. He ducks out of it, actually. It hits him on the shoulder and ends up in the back of the net. So a little bit of fortune there for Stockport. And I think they probably deserve a little bit of luck as well. We'll bring you up to date with all the other first division scores when we come back. <coughs> But at halftime in our featured game at Oakwell, Barnsley are doing what they have to do. No frills, not many thrills at the moment, but they're winning. That's all that counts. Coming up on Thursday night, the UEFA Cup quarter-final second leg between Werder Bremen and Arsenal. The Gunners two up from the first leg, of course. The programme also includes highlights of Leeds' second leg against Slavia Prague. It's all from 7 o'clock Thursday night on Sky Sports News. It's 1-0 to Barnsley at half-time in our live first division game. Bolton leads Sheffield United by one goal to nil. Now that game kicked off at 8 o'clock. This happened after 32 minutes. Alan Johnston cutting in from the left. And look at that for a finish. I bet Rangers are pleased they've signed him for next season. Huddersfield 1, Nottingham Forest 1. Marlon Harewood after 21 minutes for Forest. Chris Beach with the equaliser six minutes later in the 
Big relegation clash at Vale Park, a disastrous first 45 for Brian Horton's side. They're trailing Warsaw by two goals to nil. Pedro Matthias after 12 minutes, Graham Fenton after 45. Another relegation encounter at Fratton Park, Portsmouth and West Brom. One goal after 26 minutes from the penalty spot. Guess who? Steve Claridge, his ninth in 10, his 12th in 15 altogether. And Portsmouth lead the baggies at half time. Stockport 2, Manchester City 1, as we know. And Wolves 1, Crew 0, Steve Sedgley after 14 minutes. And Bolt have now gone 2-0 up against Sheffield United at the Reebok. Not yet sure who scored the second goal for Bolton. But the important thing is that they lead. They're going great guns again under Sam Allardyce. Well, 1-0 to Barnsley here. A double substitution by the Fulham manager Paul Bracewell at halftime. As you can see, Bjarni Goldbeck and Sean Davis are going off. Coming on, Paul Pesky-Solido and Wayne Collins. John O'Kane, by the way, got the second goal for Bolton. Let's rejoin our match commentators, Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. Well, something of a gamble, maybe, by Paul Bracewell to throw Paul Pesky Solido on after a long absence with injury. But this is something of an emergency. The manner in which they lost that uh, goal towards the end of the first half to that corner routine from Barnsley. Fulham require an instant solution. Remember, they need something out of this game if they're to keep their playoff hopes on track. And Paul Pesky Solido, who's newly on, is the subject of player camp. The first 15 minutes of the second half for Sky Digital viewers on Channel 404. I agree, Rob. They do need something. We'll see what they're made of now. Now they've got to come and attack Barnsley. And they're capable of it. They've got some good players on the side. Both changes made by the Fulham manager, purely for tactical reasons. No injuries to Goldbeck and Davis, who've gone off. Collins, who's just come on, has had a fairly long absence himself. In fact, he hasn't started in nine matches since the uh, FA Cup tie against Tranmere back in January. He's a threat, though, Rob. He gets in the box, Collins. Deep runs from midfield. straight down the goalkeeper's throat. Here's Barker. Shipley, the uh, goal scorer, pulling out wide against Steve Finnan. That's where the crowd like Shipley, you know, he is a 100 percent He chases lost causes, and again, a vital goal. Finnan dropping back to uh, help out the defence in the second half since the introduction of Pesky Solido to partner Barry Hales it's nine matches since uh, Pesky Solido last played a combination of his commitments with Canada at the Gold Cup and the groin injury that he sustained over there he's busy and he's dangerous Rob anywhere around the box clever little player Ball. Collins will be charged in initially and Tinkler hits it against Kevin Ball and this is Chris Morgan with Curtis making a break to his right it's, it's nothing ball is it you give your strikers no chance with a ball like that tough competitor this fella you know battles away good in the air she's passing here's Christoph. Fulham have got to get on with things now, you know, but earlier in the first half they could take their time, sit back, you know, frustrate Barnsley, that can't happen anymore, they've got to be bright and bubbly on the ball. It's Craig Hignett, Tinkler, Appleby, Hignett. Simon Morgan. I always think Rob as well. You know, when, when you're coming away from home trying to make a point or you know frustrate, let the centre halves have the ball. You know, when you get it wide, they can create things, but let the two centre halves have the ball if you're going to get behind it. Nine times out of ten they'll knock it long. Like so Melville Coleman, 
And this fella here, just say thank you very much. Just fell asleep for the goal. Well, how costly will that lapse of concentration be? Steve Hayward. Flick on by Hales, aimed towards Pesky Solido. It's Kevin Ball. Morgan back to John Curtis. Hales trying to have a little, a little dig there at Morgan. What a contest all night, that one. Here's Phelan. Coleman towards Hales. Nice touch from him to get away from Curtis, and he sets up Pesky Solido. Again, the goalkeeper in the right place, but only on the pitch, what, for four minutes, and already getting a strike on target. Already an increased look of potency about the uh, Fulham attack. Their best opportunities in the first half fell to the makeshift striker Finnan, one of which was wide and uh, one of which did test the goalkeeper as one of their attempts on target, one of five that they've managed. That's interesting. Eight against four, incredible. Barnsley's on target, leading to a goal from Chivalry. I have to say, Rob, I thought Fulham, you know, the position they are in, I thought they had to come and win tonight. It's it disappointing me a little bit the way they started the match. Well, they got so far with their game plan of absorbing everything that Barnsley could throw at them, and they frustrated them to a degree. Here's Curtis. Yeah, he's always struggled for the ball, but Christoph made a beeline for the far post. Sometimes I think, give him a chance, give Curtis a run, get near post. Let's check it. John Curtis. Shipley. Coleman lets it go and it's Appleby behind him. Back passes from Hayward. And Appleby was lurking. It was a risky clearance from Taylor, but he found his man, Ball. Terry Phelan, who played in a defeat against Barnsley in the uh, latter part of his loan spell at Crystal Palace this season. Now Pesky Solido. Oof, what a challenge. Chris what Morgan a challenge. Now he made it. Andy Melville. Hales. Appleby. Finner. Lifted it over Barker. He's got Collins and Pesky Solido in the box. Oh, Barker and Barnard between them the danger that uh, Finnan posed to them. Ball, Hayward, this is Coleman. Hayward, that's good press for Barnsley. Hignett. Amazing the respect that Hignett has when you know there's two Barnsley players going for the ball. One of them's Hignett, they just automatically leave it to him. And he does make things happen. Makes a little bit of space for himself on his right foot and dragging it wide. Struggling here against Shipley. He's recovered well, the uh, Welsh international. Collins, now Finnan. These two are doing really well together, you know. Down the left hand side for Barnsley. Barnard and Barker working as a pair. They played together really intermittently. Barnard's had his problems with injuries this season. Melville, who like Barnard, is in the current Welsh squad. 
as is Coleman and Kit Simons, who's among the uh, Fulham substitutes. side Collins Finnett fans that can hold on here Rob you know you look at the fixtures Wolves away looks the hardest on paper apart from that it's not too bad at all this is a huge win for them if you can do it Bassett, I'm sure, would tell you there are still plenty of uh, minefields lying in wait for them. Teams may be struggling at the wrong end of the table, but that gives them plenty of in incentive to beat Barnsley. Melville tosses it in. Always the keeper's ball. Not enough pace, Matt. The height was right for Miller to come. Good, good call, keeper. A good catch. Miller, one of two players in whom Dave Bassett has invested financially this season. Paid a fee for him from Crystal Palace and for Neil Shipperley. He did, of course, bring in uh, Keith Brown as well, although he's not involved in the squad tonight. Tinkler committing the offence. I think this stage of the season, Rob, games get tight and tense, don't they? So much to play for. Offside. Barker. Kept in by Finnan. Morgan. Shipley. The combination with Tristan, but uh, Shipley goes down. A good challenge from Ball. There's Curtis. Tinkler, feeling back to Coleman. Melville under pressure from Bristoff. He's uh, done that well in the second half, Georgie Bristoff. Now Phillip playing across the back, Coleman and Melville. Bristoff, the means in town to go for that. There must be a little tug somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I want them shots. Pesky Solido with a header back. Finnan. Collins. Finnan's cross. Yeah, it's good play. Hales is furious. But Morgan really is winning the battle between the two. Hales taking out a bit of his uh, frustration then. This is Hignett. Tinkler. Well, Tinkler ran across Collins there, went down easily. The referee, that looks a trip, doesn't it? Just catches his left leg. Not nasty. This is Hignett. Simon Morgan. And Hales is certainly getting involved in the cut and the thrust of it. I was just about to say, I think he needs a holiday in the Caymans. Barker and Ristoff is onside. And, uh, Mike Taylor making his presence felt. Collins. Yeah, they're going to have to watch Collins making these runs. Does make them from deep. It's a good ball in the box as well from Collins. Oh. 
Spence with the flick on. Ball hitting it. Just as Hayward seemed ready to line one up. Doesn't get too many goals, Kevin Ball, does he? He had to score since Paul Bracewell signed him for Fulham, although he has scored for Sunderland this season in the Worthington Cup defeat at Wimbledon back in October. Fans at the moment just doing enough. Tinkler. Shivers again, putting Coleman under pressure. Barnsley have been the free scoring team of this division. The goal they've scored tonight, their 73rd in league football. Tension mounts in the run in. I'm sure they'll forego a little of the uh, glamour and glitz and just concentrate on the rewards at the end of the 90 minutes. And I'll be quite happy to emerge from this with a win, but Hales trying to ensure it doesn't happen. Gets it across towards Collins and Morgan blocks it. That's bad from Hales, isn't it? Bust the pace, referee signal the goal kick. But again, it's Collins, the danger man, getting in the box. Nice turn of speed from Hales on his left peg. Now crosses with his right. Suddenly Barker just getting a little bit caught. Good ball across the goal, but good defending. It's Morgan again across. And John Curtis now takes over in the spotlight of player cam. Sky Digital viewers on channel 404 can keep a close eye on him. Well, his work race has gone down a little bit at the moment. Uh, and Fulham suddenly are getting more adventurous, aren't they? As they have to. A lot can happen in 30 minutes. Pesky Solidar, one of those with the responsibility of making it happen. Yeah, no need for that. No need for that. Just gives Fulham possession again. Christoph. Stupid foul on Melville. Melville Coleman up front. As Dave Bassett comes down from his perch in the director's box. Dave's thinking about a change. Race World's change it. Will Dave follow suit? Yeah. Ball cleared by Tinkler. Haywood. Head back by Curtis. Well, I don't think the linesman's in offside. Linesman kept his flag down. Miller looking for a bit of route one here. It's Ristoff looking to get on the end of it. And the header away by Taylor. Appeared to have had the edge over Phelan. Curtis, and he's played it around well, and it's Barnard. Can he cut it back across here? Coleman again, just taking off the feet of Christoph. Pignett. Appleby. Teammates didn't. Tinker. Morgan, Phelan, Coleman, Simon Morgan, Elton, Hales again disagreeing, <laughs> he's getting frustrated isn't he, this is tight, there's no doubt about it, Collins helping on, ever so tight. Dave Bassett clearly feels that things have just been stagnating from Barnsley's point of view, and that's why he's opted to make the change. Christoph is coming off. And Mike Sheeran, whose confidence has been at a low ebb, having gone 18 games without a goal, comes on in an attempt to rectify that record. Still 
too good a player for that to something wrong. And Twelve of those were when he was in the starting lineup. Fulham are going to make another switch, I'm sure they are. They've got to throw everything at this. Shift! Shift! Come on! Uh, it might be the uh, time to unveil their new American winger. His nickname's Carl. <laughs> who's uh, waiting patiently on the bench. He was an unused substitute at the weekend against Blackburn. Clear by Miller. Pesky Solid out. Now Hayward. Melville. Simon Morgan. This is Thielen. Just towards Wayne Collins. Ball it is, he's pulled it back across. Yeah, this is a disappointing ball by ball. Barnard. This is Curtis. Sheeran gets into the action. A little dummy was on there, picking that right behind them. Melbourne was committed. is made of now. Yes, uh, first sight in English uh, football of the uh, man they bought from San Jose in the major US league. Simon Morgan, the player who's coming off. And Lewis, whose uh, debut was delayed initially by the necessary paperwork. San Jose, a few years ago since I played there, Rob. <laughs> His entire career has uh, been spent there, but he is an American international, a player of some pedigree, and they had to move quickly to sign him when it became apparent that other clubs were interested. And they uh, need him to produce a quick bit of wizardry tonight. Barely a quarter of the game left. Yeah, Fulham needs something done, and they need at least a point, I think, to take away. Tinkler's done well from tonight. Here's Hignett. Barker. Towards Sheeran, Melville coming out towards him. Sheeran's got to start holding the ball just over 20 minutes or less. The advantage is you can't be giving possession away too cheaply. One nil up, it's vital you hang on. Don't give it away up there. Could he start again? 
me and my shadow. Fulham then continuing to uh, probe for this equaliser. Uh, Paul Bracewell as substitutes. Just too casual. Glorious chance for the American. Fulham fans off. What a setup. It would have been a special way to mark his introduction. And uh, Barnsley see that as the time to make a change. Matt Appleby coming off. And making way for Jeff Thomas. Yeah, I think it's a good stop this drop. Appleby's worked hard. Oh, what a chance that was. Well, Miller's kick not the best, and Pesky Solido immediately puts the back of the pressure. He's had. That's, what, that's all you need for 20 minutes to go. himself into bother with uh, Graham Laws, Barry Hales, and he's got to be careful now that he doesn't take it a stage further. Well, he still is, isn't he? He's still chipping away. He's been sent off twice already this season, the Fulham striker, and he gets a yellow card now. Dismissed against uh, West Brom in the Worthington Cup and Sheffield United in the league before the turn of the year. Thank 
Curtis to advance. Tassels like this. Look at him pulling his shorts. <laughs> Could have been embarrassing. Shelton's furious. Heels again involved. <laughs> he just wants to get on the bus home. At least he's showing a bit of fight. Hignett took a knock there against Phelan, but backed his feet. Pesky Solidar. He's tried to play Lewis in and concerned how much space he had. Oh, fantastic challenge from Morgan. Morgan's been a real star, hasn't he? He's battled away tonight again. Lewis showing his pace. Morgan has to time this to perfection, and he does. Blocks it super. Eddie Lewis, who's really livened things up since he came on, is now going to be in focus for player camp. The Sky Digital viewers on channel 404. Collins goes for his corner and claims another. Phil and Phil, they're not getting the rub of the green here from the referee. That's an outswinger, isn't it? Right to look for Collins. Well, from there, Collins claims corner. Looked a goal kick to me. It's not happening for Brace. There's their promotion dream dying here tonight. Of course, as good professionals, they uh, won't give it up until it's uh, statistically impossible to reach the playoffs. But they'll be leaving themselves with a huge chasm if they can't pick up points here tonight. Here's Thomas. He's enjoying his football again, Jeff Thomas, getting forward. Against Stockport, he was up and down, showing good form. Horrendous injuries over the years. There's Curtis with the throw. Hey! Hey! Going against Sheeran and full feeling this time. Struggled for goals in the league this season in marked contrast to their form in the Cups. The lowest scorers in the uh, top half of the first division. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it, Rob? When you look at the strikers they have as well. It doesn't add up. One of their strikers have scored for them in an away league match since Jeff Horsfields at Walsall back in November. Fans of fans are desperate now. They know the team's flagging. It's running out about a little bit of puff. Fulham go searching for this equaliser. Phelan's throw. Is there life in the uh, Fulham promotion campaign yet? Pesky Solidar. Ball. Hales. Yeah, Barnsley anywhere will do at the moment. Got have someone up there, but the, the service got to be better, and they've got to hold it up and give the defenders a chance to push up too deep. And Sheeran. Well, Taylor gambling there with uh, Sheeran and Barnard both in close attendance. Here's Melville. Finnan. Yeah. 
Tinkler. Finnan getting it across. And Phelan! Oh, he don't get pulls his arms away. Phelan doesn't get too many goals on his right foot. It's not an easy chance by any means. Whipped into the box for Finnan. Falls to Phelan. He's crept in there unmarked. And over Miller's head. Half chance, I would say. Maybe could have taken a touch, Phelan. He's confident enough to hit it first time. Good strike. Too high. Now will Paul Bracewell's luck turn. They started the game well. They've still had the majority of the chances. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? Five against one. Still no goals. Is that one on target for Barnsley? Was Neil Shipley's first half goal. I've seen it again at half time, Rob. Nothing wrong with the goal. Fulham had their grievances long and hard with the referee and uh, have struggled to pick their game up since then. But uh, this man, Lewis, has been a big threat since he came on. Initial cross blocked by Curtis. Gets it across second time, though, and Chettel doesn't deal with it. That's nail biting stuff now if you're a Barnsley fan. Lewis again, as you say, Rob, causing problems on the left hand side. Header back by Finnan. Hayward. Screams a handball from the home fans. Ref says no. Hayward. Curtis. And here's Hignett. Hignett's got Curtis going up on the outside of him. And what a good run it's been from the full back. Ball out, just out. Just looking at Tinkle on the midfield drop. He's, I don't know whether it's a knock, he's holding his hamstring and that could be a big problem to Dave Bassett. Shaking his head as Curtis gets himself back, he's off, hamstring's gone. Well, they have a replacement in Robin van der Laan and Dave Bassett is going to have to bring that change about instantly. That's a huge blow, you can see him stretching, immediately clutching his hamstring. And that's bad news at this stage of the season, he's an influential player for Dave Bassett. Let's hope it's not. Let's hope it's a bit of cramp. But it looks to me as if it's hamstring problems. And while they deal with that uh, injury to Tinkler, we can bring you news of another goal in the derby match at Edgeley Park. And it's an equaliser for Manchester City. And Richard Jobson, who scored in wins against Crystal Palace and Birmingham this season, has drawn City level. It's two all there now. It's a soft goal to me, I don't know what Carlo was thinking about there, Carlo Nash, but difficult from that angle. But that's a double blow for Barnsley fans. City back level, off goes Tinkler. Let's hope, let's hope not for the end of the season. The loss of uh, Tinkler is uh, quite severe. Van der Laan comes on to uh, slot into his place. as the uh, position stands at the moment Barnsley will still go second tonight with uh, City being held but that's of course provided that uh, they can hold on here you can, imagine, you can also imagine intense pressure from City now against Stockport can't you and Manchester City do of course have a game in hand over Barnsley as well this is hard game up at Tranmere tomorrow is promising to be an exciting climax in the battle for second place. Hayward is Pesky Solido. Hayward. I think Paul Bracewell must be shaking his head, you know. Thinking about the firepower he's got at, at his hands, you know, and it's not working. Lack of goals. Well, Dave Bassett said this week he wasn't planning any more raids on the transfer market, but I wonder if his opinion might have changed now that uh, 
Eric Tinkler has gone off with that injury. Probably the last time he actually selects Tinkler because he's out of contract at the end of the season and looking likely to move on. And Coleman lets it bounce. And gets it clear. Here's Finnan. Solido ran to Collins in towards Hales. Yeah, who's there again? Who's there again? Morgan. A little nutmeg here from Pesky Solido. Ball fired in the box. Morgan again cleaner. Wouldn't have a problem now. Collins is the latest one uh, hobbling. Thomas who gets it away. Back in there, though, from Lewis. Haywood. Pesky uh, Solido looking for a give and go, but uh, Haywood didn't go. European action for you this week, live on Sky. It's Werder Bremen against Arsenal, the second leg of that UEFA Cup quarter-final, live on Sky Sports News Thursday, a coverage starting at 7 o'clock and including highlights of Leeds match against Slavia Prague. Into the last five minutes of this vital promotion battle. Can Barnsley hang on here? Eight games left for Dave Bassett's team after this. And only Wolves to face from the top half of the table. Dave will know this has not been a sparkling display by any means, but at the same time, how vital will the three points be tonight if they hang on for five minutes? I'll tell you one thing, Rob, Lewis will be playing from the start next week. Here's Hales. And here's Lewis! Or maybe he won't. <laughs> <laughs> what a, he's had two glorious chances, hasn't he? And he is pacey getting in the box. Look, he's full of running. It falls to him on his left foot, slips. His right foot gives way just at the vital moment, dreaming of glory, another chance gone a-begging. Hayward, now Lewis. Ball. Here's Lewis again, he's the one who's causing concern for the home fans. Yeah, when Lewis gets the ball, you hear them moaning, don't you, the home fans? Definitely made a difference. They appear to have made a mess of the free kick, but uh, referee Lewis is giving them a, a second opportunity. Collins at the back, Nell goes there. Nail biting stuff for the home fans now. Can they hang out? Three and a bit minutes to go. Lewis with the kick, Collins climbing. I'll tell you what, Collins climbed well, didn't he? Back at the far post, had missed it. That's a wasted opportunity. Could have got this back across goal. Tries to get too much on it. A waste. Well, they went through it all three years ago. And a year later, in different circumstances, of course, when they were being relegated from the Premiership. And Dave Bassett has been through the promotion mangle many times. Seven promotions in... 19 years for him. Well, it's not been Barry Hale's night. He's a tough character, isn't he? Type of fighting spirit the Barnsley fans love. Lewis. Chettle. Barnard's flick.
Finnan. Here's Collins. And it's Paul who's taken over. Yet again, it's Chris Morgan who's plugged the gap. Header back from Shipley. This is Van der Laan, Hignett to his left. Lewis coming back at Van der Laan, but he's managed to pick out Craig Hignett. He could finish it here. So I knew he was going to do that, Hignett. I knew as soon as he looked up, you knew a little chip was coming. He's a, a big strapping keeper, Mike Taylor. Oh, Bounsley. They have to keep possession. Fulham's last chance now. Lewis across to Collins. Now Finnett. Hayward. <laughs> Hayward from Ball and Fulham can see their promotion dreams slipping away. You wouldn't expect Kevin Ball to try one of them, would you? And it's disappointment, but not for this fella. Chris Morgan is the nationwide man of the match for the part that he's played in uh, maintaining this strong defensive performance three minutes more they'll have to hang on for though It'll be the first clean sheet in 11 if they hold on he hasn't done too much wrong tonight Coleman either has he he must be frustrated about a lack of goal drop well I'll tell you what Morgan's got down there holding his head he's fuming at heels now he's going to have a chat with him. Something's gone on off the ball there. Hale's just got it calmed. Well, that's if he's done something. Morgan felt he took a knock to the head. Pesky Solido gets it across this time. <laughs> Miller's territory, and he spotted that Hignett was in space. Van der Laan's made a run through the middle. Sheeran's waiting in the area as well. Hignett has feeling to shrug off first, though, and he's on the throw. It's good play from Hignett, you know, if he slings that in the box, Fulham have got plenty back there, they've got four bodies in the box, and all of a sudden they're on the counter. Good play from Hignett. 51 out of 58 passes completed. Not a bad ratio at all. Key player for Barnsley. And the key pass led to the goal. Shipley, the man who scored it. Almost freeing himself, and he has won the free kick. This will do for Barnsley at this stage of the game. Dave Bassett's team holding on. Now, last minute coming up. No rush to take this, Barnsley. So it's Murphy as well, Rob. You chase the game, and they do that to you. They keep it in the corner. You feel it clear and cut us out. Of course, you can't do that anymore. He's run on to Collins here. already claiming for it even before the ball has run out and Pesky Solido as it turns out keeps it in anyway they're looking for Lewis uh, 9.9 9.9 they got away with that one in America but not here Van der Laan, I think's the man backtracking him good play from Pesky Solido it's a hopeful ball in the box Van der Laan, uh, there might be a slice of nudges but not enough two good chances Lewis had Van der Laan. Backtracking well. Bassis has come on round. Blow your whistle. Here's Shipley. Craig Hignett. Bassett, the pass master of promotions, is three points closer to another one. But for Paul Bracewell's Fulham, could it be bye-bye to the Premiership and the day that their promotion dream died? It may not have been a vintage performance, but Neil Shipley's goal at the end of the day counts for a lot for Barnsley.
they won't bother that it's not a performance to live in the memory it's the result that counts and with eight games left Barnsley are looking good for promotion but Eddie Lewis who came on and livened things up in the second half on his debut squandered two great opportunities and just how costly will they be in the long run for Fulham but Shipperley, who's been a regular in Dave Bassett teams has got the routine that was fed across in the end by Hignett and Shipperley showed that great poacher's instinct of his to get his 10th goal of the season they've got over one of the most difficult obstacles in their run-in they have still got Wolves to face but the rest of their remaining program against teams in the bottom half of the table it's a healthy boost for Barnsley's campaign to get promotion automatically they've beaten Fulham here by one goal to nil well thank you very much indeed I can tell you the final whistle has just gone at Edgley Park as well it's finished Stockport 2 Manchester City 2 and it means that Barnsley do go second in the first division table this evening now still to come tonight at 10 on Sky Sports 1 it's the Tuesday night sports centre followed at a quarter pass by our football phone in you're on Sky Sports on Sky Sports 2 next LPGA Golf and over on Sky Sports 3 at 10, there's boxing, the 1972 fight between Roberto Duran and Ken Buchanan. On Sky Sports Extra, there's more wrestling action from the WWF in Late Night Live Wire. And of course, you can keep up to date with all the latest sports news in Results Extra over on Sky Sports News. Well, as Rob said, it wasn't a classic, but priceless nonetheless for those Barnsley supporters. Three more points for the tights. We'll have reaction and analysis when we come back. Come on! Welcome back to Oakwell, where Barnsley have beaten Fulham by one goal to nil. Look at the match facts, though. Fulham with 13 attempts at goal, six on target. They won the corner count as well. They didn't win the top line, though. They won the bookings count for their troubles. Steve Hayward and Barry Hale shown yellow. Likewise, Darren Barnard. Action area's first half. Barnsley had the better of those. A little more of the ball as well. Pretty tight at the second 45. The attendance just under 15,000. Let's hear from the man of the match, Chris Morgan, and the goal scorer, Neil Shipley. They're both with Alan Bentley. Neil, nail-biting stuff. How big a victory was that tonight? Yeah, it was very important, uh, especially after Saturday. I was very disappointed. And, uh, you know, it we wasn't we exciting. It was a scrappy game, but uh, we've got three points. The cameras have done you proud. Yet another goal. It owed a lot to Craig Hignett, though, didn't it? Yeah, very good thinking off uh, Barnard as well. Iggy's placed it across, and I've managed to get on the end of it. Do you know what they were moaning about at all? I don't know. I have got a clue. You don't care, but <laughs> bring you in, Chris. I mean, the defence hasn't always earned the plaudits this season, but you did the stuff tonight, didn't you? Yeah, we've kept a clean sheet. We've, uh, we've worked really hard. Uh, we've got three points, as Ship says. Good to bounce back from Saturday, so uh, hopefully we can keep going. You're up in second. It isn't quite in your own hands, but surely, given your running, you must feel you've got a great chance now. Yeah, I would just got to keep playing like that. We know, uh, we know what we can do. So if we just keep working hard as a team uh, and playing football like we're good at, we know when we're a good chance. Well, well done to both of you. Nationwide, but I match Neil. Do you want to present him with that? Well done to both of you. Cheers, Chef. Cheers, Well, between now and the end of the season, Barnsley only play one other side in the top half of the table. That is Wolves, and that's why it's starting to look very good indeed for Dave Bassett's team. Ray and Nigel are with me. Not a great performance, but does not matter, as we said at half time. No, I think Neil Shipley said it all there. Very scrappy, but you take the three points, and that's really what it was all about for Barnsley. I think Fulham's second half played very well. They changed back to the 3-5-2 formation, which they're used to, and looked uh, unlucky really not to get a goal. There'll be a lot of very frustrated Fulham fans tonight, weren't there, right? I thought they were very unfortunate, Mark, as I'd have to say. So I thought they deserved something out of the game. I think the stats actually show that they had far more shots on target, had far more attempts during the game. And I thought in the second half, as Nigel quite rightly states, they did very well. And young Eddie Lewis looks to be, a, or he will be, a, a favourite at Craven Cottage. But it has been the story of their season, 39 goals mm. in 38 games. It, it's not good enough for promotion, really, is it? It isn't good enough for promotion, no. It's only the fact that they've worked so hard defensively to keep a, a number of clean sheets that they're where they are at the moment. But they do have the quality, if everyone's fit, they have the quality to push for a place. And as I said, 
at the top of the show. It's been very unfortunate for them. It's, it's come at a, their injuries have come at a time when they really desperately needed a full complement of players. Well, not a lot of highlights uh, to pick out, Nigel, but that was one of them. He had a pretty good game, actually. He had a good game, Finn, yes. Finn, good strike there. I mean, he plays in a number of positions as well, which is great for a manager. But, uh, you know, you want all your squad. I think, really, Fulham have got a very good squad, but they're just, unfortunately, as Ray said, picked up these injuries along the way, and especially to strikers, and have not had that relationship up front consistently. Well, this is the incident that led to the goal. Definitely Phelan's final touch, so... Definitely, was a definitely a corner to Barca, yeah. yeah. And then they just went to sleep at a, at a crucial moment. Well, I think that's where Craig has been so good this year. Craig, Craig Hignett is very bright, and I think at this level, first division level, perhaps he didn't quite hit it off at Premier League, but certainly first division level, he's an excellent footballer. Excellent footballer. And Dave Bassett obviously values Neil Shipley because he takes him wherever he goes. Wherever he goes. Well, I was, I was at Chelsea with Ships as a young lad. This is a great chance here for Lewis, Eddie Lewis. I mean, uh, he was onside, most probably his first touch. It's an excellent chance there. We could put that in, one all. Yeah, who knows who would have gone on the one. But Ships is a good player. I mean, he's scored plenty of goals for them. He works very, very hard. And he's really the main man up front for Barnsley. It's whoever's going to play with him. Well, Fulham kept coming towards the end. It's another chance for Lewis there. Didn't get hold of it. He reminded me a little bit of Pringle. Got tremendous speed, but when he gets into the goal-scoring position at this stage, he doesn't I think quite... he'll be OK. I think he looks as if he's got a wonderful left foot, Mark, is it? Probably just a little bit over just playing his first game. Well, here are the other scores uh, in the first division. A latest score from the Reebok when they kicked off at 8 o'clock. Bolton leading Sheffield United by two goals to nil. Alan Austin and John O'Kane, the goal scorers uh, for Bolton, but they are still playing in that match at the Reebok. Huddersfield 2, Nottingham Forest 1. Marlon Harewood put Forest in front. Chris Beach equalised after 27 minutes. And Chris Holland was the match winner after 56. Port Vale 1, Warsaw 2. That is a disastrous result as far as Port Vale are concerned. They started the night in 23rd place, Warsaw in 22nd. Pedro Matthias and Graham Fenton for Warsaw. Michael Cummings pulled one back for Vale in the second half. It wasn't enough. Portsmouth 2, West Brom 0, a Steve Claridge penalty and Sean Derry five minutes from time. Three priceless points for Pompey. West Brom still in serious trouble. Stockport 2, Manchester City 2. Moore and Flynn for Stockport. Pollock and Jobson for Manchester City. And in fact, we can now show you the goals from that game. If you didn't see them during the match or at halftime, it was Manchester City who took the lead through Jamie Pollock after seven minutes. The cross from the left headed back over. And there was Pollock in front of goal. City looking for their first win in seven games. Stockport were looking for their first win of the millennium. At that point, it didn't look as though they had a chance. But they came strong thereafter. Ian Moore equalising after 28 minutes. Keeping his cool. Good finish, good run. As I said, half-time, Man City playing a very high line there. Squeezing up. Moore, good. Bending his, bending his run. Gets on it and just slots it past Weaver. Good finish. Well, if that wasn't enough for the Stockport supporters, a couple of minutes before half-time, they went into the lead from the corner. Mike Flynn getting the all-important touch. And City staring an unpalatable defeat in the face. Weaver seeing that far too late. Well, there were a number of chances at both ends in the second half. And eventually, 11 minutes from time, City earned themselves a point. Richard Jobson with a crucial header. Good downward header, but I think Carlo, Carlo Nash, looking at this once again, would have thought that uh, he should have saved that much. Well, here are the goals now so far from the Reebok Stadium, where, as I said, they are still playing. Bolton in front after 32 minutes. What a goal that is from Alan Johnston. And then on the stroke of half-time, John O'Kane made it 2-0 for the FA Cup semi-finalists. One other score to give you from the First Division. Wolves have beaten Crew by two goals to nil. Steve Sedgley after 40 minutes and Scott Taylor after 68. Wolves home form, superb at a crucial stage superb as well. Superb at the moment. <clears throat> I think um, Connolly's doing a good job with it at the moment. and They're scoring goals as well. But uh, still a long way to go, Marcus, but I think they might, might just sneak in there. Let's show you the uh, goals from Fratton Park where Portsmouth have picked up three priceless points in that relegation battle against West Brom. They earn themselves a penalty. Early on, 
Ryan Jensen in goal, bringing down Steve Claridge. Keeper didn't like the decision. Well, I don't think I think he's fully <laughs> justified in not liking the decision, Marcus. That never looked a penalty. Yep. Strange one. Steve Claridge wasn't going to worry about that. That's his uh, ninth goal in ten games, his twelfth in fifteen. And then five minutes from time, as I say, Sean Derry wrapped up the points for Portsmouth. West Brom also had Matt Carbon sent off, so a pretty unhappy night as far as the baggies were concerned. Right, this is how the table now looks. Down at the bottom, we've said for some time that Swindon are doomed, and Port Vale probably doomed now as well after that defeat, Nigel. Yes, although they've got games in hand, they're just on a bad run at the moment. It's looking dangerous there for West Brom as well. Walsall are on a little bit of a roll. The, the goals against a very, very close. Crew have come back into it. Forest is still there. Portsmouth seem to be moving up and out of it. So from 19 down, they've still got a chance Walsall of getting out of it. Yeah, good luck to them, of course, Ray. You said during their live game a couple of weeks ago that you thought they would escape. I think the one thing I've noticed with Walsall, probably apart from the rest of them, Marcus, is they fight their socks off. And they did again at the weekend, but unfortunately lost to a late goal against Queen's Park Rangers after being 2 0 down. I still think they've got to have half a chance. OK, up top. One or two significant changes. The final whistle has gone at the Reebok Stadium, so Sheffield United are still on 50 points, having now played 38 games. Fulham down to ninth. Bolton now eighth. Wolves are seventh, a couple of points behind Huddersfield. Then Birmingham, who play against Blackburn tomorrow night. Ipswich, who are at Tranmere tomorrow night. Manchester City down one to third. And Barnsley up to second, 68 points. They have played a game more than Manchester City. And Charlton sitting on top of the pile, smoking their cigars, thoroughly enjoying themselves. Well, Dave Bassett will have enjoyed the result, if not the performance, at Oakwell this evening. And the Barnsley manager is now talking with Alan Bentley. Dave, was that a night when the result mattered more than the performance, do you think? Yes, yeah, certainly the result was important for me. I think that game should have gone out after the watershed, to be quite honest. You know, I mean, we were poor tonight. It was a poor performance by us. I thought we were nervous. I thought we were very apprehensive. Uh, uh, it was a time where I thought it got to us. And uh, we didn't play today, really. And, uh, you know, I'm glad with a 1-0, a, a you know, the, the result was important for us. And uh, as I say, really, you know, Fulham were in the game. And it was, it was a, you know, it wasn't a very good game tonight. You said you were negative and brained on Saturday. Surely you're happier, though, tonight. Yeah, because I am. I mean, you know, I mean, I, but you've got to be realistic and you've got to look at it. It's, you know, of course we're pleased with the three points, but you can't say uh, that was we played really well and we played as we'd like to have done. You know what I mean? You've got to say sometimes the opposition don't allow you to do it and nerves get you. But it's no good as being affected by that situation. But uh, again, we can go home, we've got the three points and that's the factor. And you look back and the results later on the season show that you won 1-0. But it's no good us ignoring that and think we can play like that for the rest of the season because that won't be good enough. It's simple as that. You think you've got to be improved to get up? Well, we've got to play well. You've got to have confidence in yourself. Uh, if you let the nerves affect you, etc., like it did early on, it can be a problem. And uh, the players, are, uh, I think, are just pleased they've got a result out of the way. They know they haven't played well. You know, there was a lot of things I could point my finger at tonight. You know, you look there and wonder whether your side's been coached when you see some of those things going on. You're a hard taskmaster. Thanks, Dave. Cheers. Honest assessment from a man who is no stranger to this sort of situation, of course. No, he knows what it takes to, to get promotion from this situation. And I think he knows, bring the lads back down to earth, say, OK, we've got the three points, but we've got to produce better performances than that from now to the end of the season. Otherwise, we won't get in that second spot. And we'll, you know, you want to, if you, even if you're in the playoffs, you want to go in in form. You want to be in a form team. Is it all over as far as Fulham are concerned now? No, I don't think it is. You've only got to look at the table and it's not all over, Marcus. Big game for Queen's Park Rangers tomorrow night against Crystal Palace. They could get themselves back in with a shout. Um, but listening to Dave there, you know, you, we can talk about who's going to win what game, what game this and, and everything as far as results concerned, Marcus. But when it comes down to it, it's down to the bottle and the nerve at the end of the day. And I think that was quite apparent that Dave thought his lads really didn't show enough quality. And they're a side that is really performing very well at home. Mm. Let's get Paul Bracewell's verdict. He's now talking to Alan. Paul, hindsight's a marvellous thing. Would you change your approach if you played that game again? No, not really. I think the only thing that... Uh, obviously, the goal was disappointing. Um, apart from that, they didn't really cause any problems, you know. I think we caused them more problems. What was it that you were particularly disappointed about about the goal? I saw the players complaining. Well, the linesman put his flag up for a goal kick, so all our lads have turned around now, and for some reason, he's changed it to a corner, but our lads haven't switched on, and they've just played it in, and we've been caught, you know. Now, I know you won't give up, but you accept it's a very tall order now to get into the playoffs. No, we've still got a chance until it's, uh, 
the numbers say we can't make it. But um, the lads are disappointed, but for the second half performance, I think we deserve something out again. Do you think people must remember that last season Fulham were, after all, in Division 2? They've come a long way, haven't they? They've come a long way, but uh, you know, I'm ambitious and so are the lads, and that's why we're disappointed. But uh, we'll keep fighting to the death. Transfer deadline day, Lumi. You can tell me. Are you going to make a move in the transfer market, Paul? You never know. You never know. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> well, I think that means yes, doesn't it? You're both <laughs> ex-managers. <laughs> so you have to wait and see, won't you? There's every chance, Marcus, <laughs> I'd have thought. You know, Paul yeah. does have a, a bit of financial back in there at Fulham. But he spoke very well, I thought, there, Paul. I think he's done a super job at Fulham. OK. Let's just uh, clear up exactly what was happening at Fratton Park. We showed you that first goal for Portsmouth, uh, and both of you were a little mystified at the decision. Here's another chance to have a look. What's wrong with that? That's a Nothing. great save. Good goalkeeper. Yeah. Well, Jensen was furious, but it was all to no avail. Carriage scoring. The ball away, Marcus out away from it. He's not touched the uh, Steve Claridge there. This was the second goal that Portsmouth scored five minutes from time. Nicely finished by Sean Derry off the inside of the post. They're getting a run together. They are at the right at the right time, Marcus. They've done very well, Portsmouth. And as far as Barnes are concerned, of course, before the game, you both said they're going up in second place. And if they can keep chiselling out performances like this, then quite remarkably, you're both going to be right for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a change, Marcus. I must say that I had Man City to draw tonight as well, so uh, yeah, good results. I'm 2 0 down already. He's yeah. a clever boy, yeah. Well, <laughs> less said about that, the better. Thank you very much indeed. That's it uh, from us. We'll see you uh, at the weekend. For now, though, goodbye. You're my last breath. You're a breath of fresh air to me. Tell me you care for me Time is upon us Oh, but the night is young Flowers blossom In the wind In your arms I feel Sunshine The Nationwide Football League on Sky Sports, sponsored by Dockums, giving a voice to football fans.